Well, thank you so much for staying with us. And thanks, Wendy, again, for being here. Thanks and we're talking me. about um, the Master Recycle Program. And so it's a seven-week program. Yes. It started on Thursday night, this past Thursday night, and it will be every Thursday night for seven weeks. Well, Correct. starting that. And so... You had said that you had to sign up and do all seven classes. Of course, that's just how the Master Gardener, you know, program is. You have to go to so many consecutive classes, and then you're going to do some field trips. Once this program is done and you have Master Recyclers, are you going to be offering this program, like, on a yearly basis? Have you guys decided what you're going to do with that? Well, we hadn't decided, but due to the overwhelming response to this program— and you probably have had 20, to cut it off. We did. We have mm-hmm. 24 registered uh-huh. and a lot of interest. A lot of people have said, oh, Thursdays just don't work Doesn't or work. this just isn't a good time for me. Mm-hmm. However, I would venture to say if we were to open up registration again for next year, it would fill up right fill now. Up right now. Right. And you might do it on a different day that works exactly. for other people. And right. since this is our maiden voyage, so right. to speak, uh-huh. These master recyclers are going to be very special and important to me because they're going to help literally shape this program, which in turn helps shape our communities. Right. And then they'll be able to help with the classes that you do in the future. Exactly. You know, it won't all be on you to. Yes, I have three counties. Sometimes I do not like to turn people away. A lot of times on weekends, if I'm already committed, I have to say no. I mean, I am at the 720 markets, the fairs, oh, uh-huh. events throughout the community all year. And um, we do ask 20 hours of volunteer time from our master, master recyclers. recyclers. Uh-huh. Yes. And then obviously, hopefully they'll continue for years to come. Right. Exactly. And then, you know, they will be spreading the word also about what a great program that it exactly. is so that more people will want to do it. And everybody has their own talent and their own thing that they're passionate about. Right. And, you know, we have people who are education people, some people who are people people, some mm-hmm. people who are technologically advanced. And I'm very excited to tap into all this talent and all these passions. Right. And well, this will be great. It is going to be great. Right. And so um, if someone is interested in recycling and they don't have curbside at their home, um, how do – just give them some tips – You know, a lot of times during Earth Week, we do some classes and things like that. But give our listeners some tips on what they can recycle and how they should recycle. You know, like you had said something about clean. Our recyclables (laughs) need to be clean, dry, and empty. It is very important that we start paying more attention to our recyclables or else they will end up going to the landfill. Okay. So if you're making more work for the people at the recycle center or if the commodity is contaminated they will send it to the landfill Mm -hmm. Um, so we want to make sure they're clean dry and empty leave the bottles caps on it used to be to take them off but now it helps keep the plastic bottle clean dry and empty if you leave the lids on on that seems to be because we used to say take the lids off now we want to keep them on and then um Our, I feel our drop-offs sites are pretty convenient. Mm -hmm. If you're going through Stark County, there aren't many places that That don't have have access. too far to one. Right. Schools, churches, um, public outreaches. You have Mm -hmm. one on your property. we have one on our property. Um, And if you need help finding one, our website will list them all for you. Mm -hmm. And um, paper. Right. Cardboard. We ask that the cardboard be flattened. flattened. Yes, because if you don't, it does add a lot of bulk into the bin. Right. You can't fit near as much in. Exactly. I know. And I notice that sometimes when people are putting in at our place, the boxes aren't smashed and the bin fills up so quickly. Exactly. That then, you know, a gust of wind comes the lid comes open, exactly. the boxes come out, my neighbors are calling me, <laughs> Cindy, <laughs> come get this box. Come get this box. It blew into my yard. You know, those kind of things do happen. We, so We have noticed a little bit of a negative thing. People have been throwing a lot of trash in our recycle bins. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would encourage people to feel free to give the office a call if you see a couch or a chair or right. bags of trash near your recycle bins because we will take care of that. Uh-huh. We will send right. someone out and take care of it. And we also employ a litter deputy to help oh. track 
and to keep down the problems. Um, now, I keep telling all of my employees, we are going to put a camera up <laughs> and find these people that do this. <laughs> well, what's interesting is a lot of our sites do have cameras. Uh-huh. I'm not going to say which, which ones. ones right? <laughs> However, you know, it's just not a good idea. It's a free service for the community right. to recycle and do the right thing. And it would be very unfortunate if we could no longer provide that service. Oh, exactly. But I can imagine, you know, when somebody, you know, throws a half of a bottle of something nasty in there, you know, how it could get just wretched. It, it could mm-hmm. get wretched, right. yes. So, like, if we are doing, let's say, our fabric softener bottles. Right. Um, should we rinse them out first? Or, because, you know, you always have that little dribble of fabric yes. softener in the bottle. Well, I always just put some water in it, rinse it out, and put it into and my washer. See, me too. I'm quite frugal like <laughs> yes. that. Yes. I, so, I don't want to waste one drop of it if so I'm So, it's environmentally it. friendly and... You're doing the right thing. Just rinse it out. I mean, right out. they don't have to be clean, but they should be rinsed. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it's sort of common sense. The biggest thing is peanut butter jars. Really? Because that is pretty cumbersome to clean a peanut butter jar. Right. But at the end of the day, it doesn't take that much time. And it's for your own benefit. You don't want critters and bugs in your recyclables. Right. Because I know at my house, the recyclables will sit longer Mm-hmm. Then the trash will in the recycle bin under the counter. You know, the trash goes out regularly. Uh-huh. The recyclables will sit for a couple days. See, it's opposite at my house because I have so much that I recycle mm-hmm. and I have such little amount of trash. I hardly have any trash because I recycle. We're pretty so good with much. trash, but we have a puppy. Oh, yeah. But she also likes recyclables also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And I'm a single person. I live by myself, you know. Right. So that does make a difference, yes, too. I have children. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mine are all grown and gone. Well, so. mine are grown but not gone. Oh. <laughs> mine comes and stays with me sometimes. So, <laughs> But this is a great program um, that's offered. We're real excited to be a part of it. Um, not that you can come now because it's, <laughs> it's all it's, it's started. It's started. Um, but um, it is. I'm real excited about being there. Um, and look on for Thursday our night. master recyclers in the community when they right. start going out and thank them. Ask them questions. Keep right. them busy. If you have an organization that may need someone to come and speak, come and speak, or to have an event. I will share my master recyclers. That would be great. You know, when you're doing something, um, you know, at an event that your your group is doing, your church group is doing. Civic uh, organizations, right. the, luncheons. Right. The master recyclers, just like the master gardeners. Yes. They can come out and give out information about exactly. recycling. They're going to be very well trained. We're encompassing all. All aspects of solid waste, Uh from air quality to water treatment to what to do with your prescriptions. Why should you not put them down the toilet? Down the toilet, right. Why, you know, not just reduce, reuse, and recycle. We are going to encompass all kinds of DIY projects, you know, simple things we can do around the house. I'm very excited. Yes, this is going to be a very cool program. It is. And and being able to continue it um, in the future will be great. And, you know, before long, we'll have a lot of master recyclers. I hope so. And that will be be great. I hope everyone becomes a master recycler, at least in their own home. Exactly. And, you know, having more master recyclers out there that can share their knowledge, we can become master recyclers in our own homes. It's exactly. Not that, not, not that all of us can go out and, and share in the public. You exactly. Know, but, but simple changes. Exactly. You know, it's always it's sort of like I say, you know, eating habits. It's, you know, make little changes. You know, don't go on a diet. Make little changes in your diet and make it a, a lifestyle change. And recycling is a lot like that. You know, make a lifestyle change. Take some small steps. Say, you know, right from now on, we're going to start with plastic. The average American used 167 water bottles last year alone. That's a sin. It is. At the Wayne County Fair, I actually made a display, and I put 167 water bottles up on a board. And it is very humbling to see. Plastic comes from oil. Right. A natural resource. People, I don't think, make that connection. No one wants to pay $4 a gallon for gas, but will pay $1.67 for a bottle of water. Exactly. That that bottle will 
be around essentially forever. Almost all plastic is on this planet somewhere. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away. Right. Even if you throw it in a landfill, it's still there. It's still there. In our oceans. Even if we recycle it, technically, it's still around. Right. We're just making use of it in another form. Yes. And we really have to do that. But I think we really have to stop drinking bottled water. That is very easy to do. It is so easy. You know, this is crazy that we are a society that think we cannot drink tap water. What is this? I, I don't understand. And and also some other fun facts. It takes more water to make the bottle than the water that goes it's into in the, the bottle. bottle. And the amount of water trapped in those water bottles that goes to the landfill. To the landfill. Most of our world does not have access to clean water. Right. Literally. And we're throwing we're water. throwing water away. Away. Yeah, it is crazy. And buying it. And buying it. Right. I, it just... It blows my mind the amount of bottled water that I noticed at the Stark County Fair, you know, two weeks ago. You know, it was really hot. People were buying hot. water nonstop. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, bring some water. There's they are drinking fountains at the fairgrounds. Fill your water container, you know. Bring your Yeti cup and fill it up. <laughs> this is crazy. I was teaching one day in a very humbling moment when I realized – how old I am, when we would go to the soccer field in high school. If you didn't slurp the water out of the fountain on your way out to the field, you were in trouble. My mom didn't bring me Gatorade bottles or water bottles. They did not exist. Right. And I they have had, lived to a ripe old age. Yeah. I mean, you have big bottles, but they didn't have these little bottles of kids. You know, we've got to learn to use bottles, you know, containers over and over again. <laughs> So it's just crazy how wanna, it is. Speaking of plastic, so St. Michael's School has a public drop-off. Mm-hmm. And they had decided, hey, we have this public drop-off. Why aren't we doing more in our school and in our church? So the school and the children came together, and they wrote a grant to the Solid Waste District, and they bought reusable bottles. They are no longer selling water bottles at lunch. That is great. And that's something that we all need to think about and start thinking about how we can do those kinds of things. Kids can do it. We exactly. Can do it. We can do it. Well, we want to thank you all so much for being with us. Thanks, Wendy, for being thank here. Thank you for this having me. This is going me. to be great. I'm looking forward to next thank Thursday you. night. And we just want to thank all of you. And we will be right back here with you next Saturday morning at 8 a.m. right here on 95.9 The Light. Have a blessed week.